the edge with April Mahoney brains. Here, this is the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. <laughs> Welcome home, brains. Coming to you straight from San Diego, California. Let's welcome our host, April Mahoney. Stephanie, I keep telling you, girl, I love that hair. You are just doing it. The last time you were here with me on the edge, has it been a year? It's been a year. Yeah, it's been a year. Wow. Who does that? I know, but it doesn't feel like it's been that long, though. It feels like I it know. was just today. <laughs> and between then and now, we were supposed to meet in Vegas to see your son, the monster, kick some I know. Butt. <laughs> I agree. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Gonna. And I'm so glad that it's happening here on the edge, right here. Right? Absolutely. Look who I have back on the show. Friend of the show, my girlfriend in Canada, Okay. We connected and we just follow each other online and she is just a wonderful person, but she is a cutting edge psychotherapist. I mean, she gets down to the nitty gritty. She's a life coach and an author. And I'm glad to have her back here on the show. I'm going to have her son, who is the heavyweight champion of Canada, Malden Monster Maldus. Malgus. He's going to be on Saturday. And we're going to talk about channeling rage. So we're going to talk a little bit about that with his mom and, you know, see how she encouraged him to be a boxer and how he's working through that, what she's pouring into people. And also she's got a new book that's coming out. Now her last book was something that we raffled off in the swag bag box. It was so funny. It was get this mole off my back, the mother-in-law from hell. And I tell you, my brains went crazy over that. They were like, who's going to win this? Who's going to win this? Because everybody was feeling that. But the mold that's on our back is different now. It's not a mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. It's the police here in the United States. And they're putting a knee in our neck. Okay? Mm-hmm. They're killing black folks like sport now. And now that it's become, you know, a hot topic, it just seems like it's going crazy. So yeah. I need to kind of help us walk through that. And what do we do so that we don't continue to be angry but we become more strategic. I'm so glad to have you back here. You're so smart. Thank you. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, April, what, what stood out for me the most is, um, and I'm just, uh, one of the things that I, that I teach in my life coaching, and I do the spiritual life coaching and spiritual direction, is we talk a lot about spirit and natural laws, like the law of attraction, what we attract in our lives and things like that. And uh, one piece that stood out for me is something that I listened to one of one of your pieces lately, and I thought it's brilliant. It was that piece that you had on, and when you were talking about race, and you were talking about Bitcoin and Black coin. <laughs> that one there, that focus is the solution. That focus of positivity, elevating, bringing people up, channeling, and ha- having people that are in positions of power and intellectual academia, having everybody come together through a positive channel. That just elevates up, not only an individual, but a whole community rises up. And sometimes when we have uh, anger and rage, what happens is just by the spiritual laws, on one side, we have a lot of upset and a lot of um, people in pain and a lot of wounding, and that's what we're seeing. But what happens with the law of attraction is on the other side, the part that we don't see is the part that's raising up on the other side. You're seeing people that may have were dormant, that were quiet. Well, that starts to give birth to this side. So we keep having this perpetual cycle going as the pendulum keeps swinging from one side to the other. So while you have a group of people that are oppressed and wounded, and on the other side, it starts to raise up people that start to get angry, that see, for example, uh, one group will see a protest, and another group will see a riot. Right. So, it's all, it's all about perception. But, yes. and, you know, and I try to tell my friends of different races and different cultures, mm-hmm. you know, uh, this is not a magic wand. It's not going to mm-hmm. go back. People's ideas, perceptions, prejudice, ignorance, is uh-huh. not going to change overnight. No. But what we can do is we can become more conscious. We can become right. aware we are awakened and we can become self-sustainable. A hundred percent. Yeah. 
And I want people to I want people to love, but you know, um, Stephanie, love is a big twenty five dollar word. Yes. And it takes it takes commitment. And people say, do you have unconditional love? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, you know, there's conditions on mine. It, it yeah. is because if it get real crazy, I don't yeah. love you anymore. That doesn't mean I don't like you. Yes. But love is a whole different thing. And so for people just to uh, embrace all of this all of a sudden and just be in love with this new philosophy or, you know, uh, be in love with the police department or be in love with their spouse, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work and dedication. It does. You know? it does. And so you've been doing this psychotherapy for a long time. What's your why? Why are you doing that? Well, actually, I started off in life coaching first before I went into the psychotherapy. Oh, really? Yes, actually. And what I found was uh, in life coaching, sometimes people would hit a wall. And usually that wall wasn't a lack of willpower. It was oftentimes our limiting self-belief. For example, if we had a belief that we're not good enough or we had a fear of failure, and even a fear of success, sometimes it's really challenging to achieve that goal. It, yeah, it is. A lot of people are afraid of success. Because yes. that takes work too, you know, getting adjusted to that is no joke. Oh, for sure. And the, and say even a fear of money, even of like, yeah. what am I going to feel like? Am I still going to keep my friends? You know, I don't know how I'm going to be. Am I going to have to move into a new neighborhood? So a lot of things. And sometimes people like to keep us down and sometimes even people close to us. So even sometimes maybe as you're starting to do better, you might get comments from other people. And so you'll tend to pull back. So those are some of the things that we'd have to work through. So sometimes coaching wasn't enough. We've got to go back and clean up some of those old limiting beliefs and old wounds that we're living with. Right. And the neuro, uh, neuro linguistic programming, the conversation that we're having in our own brain. That's right. That's because right. We're just sucking this up, up at, like it's factual and yeah. it's not. It's, you know, perpetuated and constructed and manipulated. You know, that's, that's how, those are some other big $25 words, brains that I want you to look into is how are you being manipulated? How are you being controlled? How are you being influenced? Who are your influencers? I hope it's on the edge, some good podcasters and uh, some smart people like Stephanie Maldus. I really hope so. Uh, or, you know, are you just listening to endless nonsense mm -hmm. and rhetoric? And what are you teaching your children? Mm -hmm. You know, all of that's important. Let's talk about children. You got a, a son that is nicknamed Monster. Uh, and so he's a boxer. He is yes. Canada heavyweight champion. And he's going to be on the show. I'm so excited. Uh, Can't wait. I know. Uh, but tell me a little bit about that. How did he get into boxing? And how does he kind of control his rage? We're going to talk to him more about that. But you were saying, you know, before we started the interview here, some of the techniques and, and how he channels that energy. Well, it started very early um, on. He was always a big kid, a uh, little bit chubby and always bigger and taller than most of his classmates. And he was bullied a lot as a child. So a lot of that was, um, a lot of that rage and anger started in school with unfairness. Um, sometimes, for example, he would stay play by himself and a group of boys would come over and kick him and, and you know, punch him and stuff while he was playing. And, uh, and often, usually the teachers sometimes would side with the other students. So often he would get suspended. They'd say that he hit them. Right, because he's bigger. Because he was bigger. So it was, uh, it was going on for quite a few years. And, um, and I intervened as much as I could, uh, also going into the school, talking to principals and things like that. And, um, and it was very difficult. I, there was many, many times I would just have to drop everything at the end of the night and, uh, and spend time talking with him and uh, you know, letting him know how valued he is, how loved he is. And uh, so what I found too is also to, what was important is to create other environments for him to be in, not just his school environment, because that was very challenging for him. Um, and that's how he got into different sports. So he played football as a child. He did martial arts since he was four. So just all the different things and just meeting different people in other groups. And he found that he was very well accepted and very well liked in other groups. And sometimes it was just his school environment that was challenging and difficult. Um, you know, and they just uh, probably assumed because he was bigger that he was the aggressor. That's right. That's and right. actually he was the gentle giant. That's exactly right. Yeah. 
yeah you know and uh and it was it was just challenging just with the school environment i know a lot of parents that deal with bullying and and bullies at school uh it's very very difficult because often the child that's being bullied is the one that gets punished gets right. left out and uh gets the phone calls home <laughs> but you know again teaching him how to love and to have that balance to be, you know, a strong man because you don't want to emasculate him. No, no. You know, you don't want him to turn into this big old marshmallow. That's right. Um, and so still have self-esteem and still feel good about himself and still be able to get along with others. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was, you know, really, really great. So tell us a little bit about um, your new book. I'm excited to hear about that. Oh, this, this one is, uh, is more of an interactive book. Um, I've done it in three parts, and I would probably classify it as uh, kind of a bridge, an emotional bridge uh, from where you are, like where your life is sitting at right now to where you want to be. So it's not just a book on how to achieve a goal, but kind of how to get there, what possible limiting beliefs, what's been stopping you, or what on a subconscious level are you self-sabotaging? Are you doing something or do you have a pattern of thought that's interrupting uh, your goal of how to get somewhere? Um, so the first section focuses on our natural gifts that we were born with. So it highlights and illuminates some of the things that we forget about, some of the things we take for granted and those such things. Uh, so I expand on that part. And the second part, I have incorporated a bunch of tools and strategies and techniques uh, that you can use. And then the third section is a 30 day power plan. So how you can incorporate these things. So it's designed in such a way that um, it'll help to uncover any limiting beliefs that you have. It'll show you what resistance you might have to something. So for example, if, uh, if on a particular day, there is a certain focus and attention that we're having on that day, just by how you're feeling, you'll be able to tap in and tell, okay, where in my life have, has this resistance been coming up? Um, and again, what we were talking about, uh, for example, your, your uh, fear of failure, your fear of fear that would come up and bubble up to the surface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, it, and it's well, I think that that's great because that's what books need to be now, more interactive, mm -hmm. you know, and audible. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's a lot of authors out there, and I talk to all of them, and it's, their books are um, monotone. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Give me something that gives me tools that I can go back and refer to, a reference, some insight that causes me to not just read your words, but to look inside myself and to channel that energy, mm -hmm. to be focused, to be clear. Because um, yes. it's a lot of noise out here, Stephanie. It is a lot of noise. And how do you, how do you not listen to that? And I, I'm more about learning how to be the eye in the eye of the storm. Because life is always going to happen. We're always going to have things. You know, every generation has had things coming up. There's always going to be things that are ready to throw us off. But how do we be strong? So whether you have a COVID or what do you, whether you have uh, kind of like the civil unrest and stuff that we're seeing now, mm -hmm. uh, when you have things going on, well, how can you thrive? How can you find joy and happiness in the middle of all that and still keep centered? Okay. So that's my question to you. How have you found joy? How have you been able to stay centered? And what has all of this taught you? Oh, many different ways. I use a number of different tools. Um, one thing for sure is limiting my exposure to negativity. So what, in any form. Girl, uh, I turn the TV <laughs> off. I don't even want to, I don't want to hear it. And I scroll through my news feed so fast. If I see a, a crazy post or yes. I see a particular orange person, I just scroll right on through it. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that is so key because a lot of people can't. They engage, they interact. And that's just... If you were to actually pay attention to what's happening in your body when that's going on, right. you see how toxic it is. It's right. just not good. Who wants that energy with them? Yeah. And yeah, like you said, you get, all uptight. That's you get so uptight, girl, you need a colonic. <laughs> yeah, you, do. <laughs> you do, you do. And it's hard to shake that. It's hard not to, not to just get trapped in that. So that's one of the things. Um, another thing is just different ways of uh, being grounded and connecting with nature. Uh, just either being out with nature, just listening to the sounds of, of being out, listening to the trees, listening to the rain, um, putting your feet on the grass, mm -hmm. just really connecting with, with the earth and, and just being here. Uh, prayer is also important. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we get away from prayer and just being still, just really keeping calm, keeping the cells of your body calm. 
listening to beautiful music. I love some of the musical posts that you put. A lot of my favorites. And I know, it seems like, yeah, I love the VJ. I go in there and oh. I love all kind of music from country yeah. to blues and all that. But music resonates with my soul. Me too. Me too. I can't tell you who it is, but I've got one of those artists that's coming on my show. Girl, I'm telling you, oh. I'm almost excited as much as having your son on the show. Oh, These are my two, my two favorite interviews that are going to be this year. Um, but, you know, it's something about music. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's uh, sad and good at the same time. But I go back and I play the songs that I listened to in the 70s and how relevant it is oh, in yes. 2020. Oh, yes. You know, the yes. struggles of the people and the, uh, the artists, they were like fortune tellers. They were. They were. But yeah. what's kind of sad it, along the same lines is that instead of evolving, mm -hmm. we're revolving. It's, it's going backwards. It's going backwards. And it's more. I find that it's more intense. intense. It's much more intense. It is. It is. And uh, just like the language, just the pain. I work with a lot of people that were bullied. I work with a lot of people that, um, uh, for example, uh, were devalued for and getting hired because, for example, uh, being a woman of color. I've worked with people who um, didn't get a job for the color of their skin. Uh, and how that impacts you, how that devalues you as a person and as a human being. And I don't think people understand the pain that sits in that. Um, it's, no, it's let, me, let me tell you something, how crazy it is here in the United States. We had to have legislation by our governor to be able to wear your natural hair. Wow. You, wow. You know, to go in there and to rock an Afro or to have cornrows or to have dreads, we had to have government legislation. How does that, that makes no sense. It makes no sense. You need to wonder uh, oh about God. what's up under the hair and what's in that brain of the person that you're working for. So yeah. again, I tell people, if we were really the barbarians that people portray us to be, we could have had this shit taken care of a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. We are a loving, giving yeah. people. All yes. people are giving. Yeah. All of us have prejudice, too. I don't even try to come with the point where oh, I don't see color, I don't see prejudice. That's the first thing that you're introduced to. I tell people it's three things when you're networking. I said, it's your look, it's your smell, and it's your, uh, your handshake. Those yes. are the things that you extend to people. That's so you right. want to try to make that as gentle and as warm and as inviting as possible. But okay. you have to be 100, you have to be yourself. You do. So, let's talk about some fun stuff. What sure. in the world are you doing these days for recreation and fun? I mean, I know what you're doing to ground yourself, but are you sitting there dancing in your new home because you just moved with your with your, uh, with your your yeah. man or your dog? You're cooking? What you doing, girl? Well, let me tell you, my husband and I, which uh, we, uh, congratulations on, I want to say happy wedding anniversary to you and your husband. Thank you. Yeah. 36 yeah. years, girl. I could, that's a that's whole nother amazing. show. That's a whole nother show. My husband and I are, are a little bit behind you folks. We're at uh, 31 years. Uh, we oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And our normal things uh, that I think a lot of couples uh, forget to do is to have a lot of fun with each other. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know how to struggle together. You know how to do tough times together. But you really have to learn how to have fun and enjoy each other. So my husband and I, because of this, this COVID, it's been a bit of a challenge, but we, we had a ritual. Every Saturday night was our night to get dolled up, go out dancing, and have a little bit of fun. We would do that every Saturday night. And uh, we like to play, I like to play board games, you know. We, we still do that. Yeah, I'll play, um, and I like to shoot dice. Oh. <laughs> That's from my South Central roots. You know, my brother taught me how to shoot dice, and I'm good at it. <laughs> so... So we'll sit here and we'll play backgammon or we'll play dominoes, um, you know, or we'll do a puzzle. And it's just him and I, you know, mm -hmm. it's just him and I. We'll have some tea, we'll talk, yeah. we'll laugh. Um, you know, a lot of that is it's missing in the world because people are sitting right across from their spouse and they're texting them. That's right. Yeah. And it's touch. 
It's tenderness. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, doing the boom boom all the time. I don't know why you wouldn't, but <laughs> you won't be doing the boom boom if you're not doing the other stuff too. <laughs> exactly. But holding each other's hands or rubbing somebody's back or rubbing their feet when you know that they're tired or rubbing their temple. Just that's the, right. that connection. That's the connection right. with children. Um, so many parents are now homeschooling, which I'm so glad because they didn't even have any idea that little person that was living in the house with them. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. What suggestions would you give to mothers right now? Because they're going through a lot, a lot of anxiety. They have yeah. no idea of how to school their children, you know, be their disciplinarian, be their cook, be their nanny, be their friend. It's a lot of being going on. It's, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I always, uh, I always did a lot of stuff with my children. Um, we, we did a lot of things together. We did a lot of fun stuff together. Uh, for example, let's just say if we go to the park, it's not unusual, for example, the kids would climb a tree while well, we'd all be climbing the tree. The stuff, we would get in there and just do fun right, stuff. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, and include them everywhere. And uh, so it doesn't matter if they were small, we would bring them everywhere we go. We wouldn't leave them at home. So at a small age, they got accustomed to going out. They knew how to properly behave and have good manners in a restaurant at a table. I, I know mine too. I never had a problem. She mm -hmm. knew there was, there's no falling out. Yes. But yeah. see, parents have gotten away from that. Yeah. They want to be your friend. We're not equal. No, I agree. No, I you have to be her parents. Son, I'm in my 50s and she'll never be my equal. She yes. will always be my daughter. She'll be my yes. friend. Yes. But when it comes down to it, people don't know how to edit and filter. They don't know how to sort that out. I agree. And that's a, that's a big one because um, my children always know you're always going to get the truth from me. You may not like what I have to say. It, it, you may, it, you know, I'll try to always be tactful when, when I say something, but you're always going to get the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not the kind of the, the mom that would give a participation ribbon. I'm more like, you need to, you need to merit it. You need to earn it. That's right. You know? And I'm going to be straight because the world is going to be straight with you. You're not, <laughs> they're not all going to be. And the world is cruel. You yes. know, it can be yeah. cruel and it, it doesn't have to be, uh, again, when you get older again, because, um, Maladin, he understood that at a very early age, yes. you know, he saw it. Yes. So now let me ask you some fun questions. Sure. Okay. Uh, three things that you just absolutely cannot live without. Oh, goodness. Three things that I cannot live without. You know, lady. <laughs> the, the, fam the, the, the family, of course, is number one. Okay. Of course, my husband. Um, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're one. The other one is right there. We're, uh, we're always together. Um, gosh, you know what? I'm not really attached to things. I've learned to uh, to not really be attached to stuff. What do I, I enjoy? I absolutely cannot live without. Uh, for me, it's like people, my husband, my kids. As far as anything, I'm not attached to things. Um, the nail lady. <laughs> okay, I love my nail lady. <laughs> I love getting my girly stuff done. I just love it. I love the the just to get together, and she always surprises me with what she's going to do. And like, I love doing pampering things and stuff like that. Um, but as far as, uh, things, um, I'm okay. I'm not attached to a particular home. Um, I can enjoy, I can love any surroundings. I, when I'm in my office, I love being in my office. I created it in the way that it's very comfortable and very calming and soothing. Uh, my home is the same way. It's also very calming and just a really nice environment. Um, but yeah, I'm not really attached to any particular thing. Okay. What quality do you look for in a friend? Mm. Uh, for me, that's easy. Authenticity. Mm. Authenticity. I love the truth. I love somebody's uh, opinion. I love good dialogue. I love good debate. Uh, yeah, just authenticity is number one for me. Okay. And what makes you cry? Well, lots of things make me cry. <laughs> Anytime I see any cruelty, uh, if I see any cruelty to animals, uh, if I read about any cruelty, uh, any hurt or harm that comes to children. Um, when I see somebody being mean, uh, any kind of uh, behavior that's really hurtful to somebody else, uh, that is very hard for me to bear. If you could paint the sky any other color besides blue, what would it be and why? Oh, goodness. Uh, 
I like purple. I don't know if it's because it's royal or not, but I just right. I do like the color purple. <laughs> All right. Are you a Prince fan? <laughs> like me? Oh my god, yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. That was my hidden prince coming up. <laughs> that's wild. That's wild. What would you tell a younger version of Stephanie Malgus? Mm. Enjoy that chocolate, girl. Eat it. Enjoy it. Don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> yeah. Just to not get so uptight and not to worry, not to worry so much, not to get stressed out. Enjoy life more. Okay. Yeah. And what would you share with my brains right now to keep them encouraged, to keep them in love, um, to just kind of keep them awake? Mm -hmm. Don't stop. When the news cycle is over, which it will be, when the news cycle is over, don't put your passion aside. Get involved and do something. Take action. Don't sit by the sidelines. And I think so, that sometimes happens. Is when the news cycle is over, people think it's over. When an election cycle is over. Oh, right, 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 right. That's, that's really the time to hold folks' feet to the fire. Yes. And this is yes. all over the world. Yes. All over the world. Yes. They're talking yes. about defunding the police department, which I don't think is very smart. I don't think so because there's some bad actors out there, you know, but I need you when you come to bring the peace, not bring your peace, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. This showcase that there's work to be done all over the place. All uh, over the place. All yeah. over the place. And That's everybody what... is uniting as one, you know, they've had a lot of time to sit yeah. back and really kind of do some soul searching, look at themselves look at their environment you know the water is much cleaner all over the world the yeah. air is much cleaner yeah. you know so what is this going to look like moving forward because this is a precursor okay this is a warning and yeah. it i loved it you know i loved it in a weird kind of way because it made everybody stop everybody i agree how much money you had your political uh influence how young you are how old you are all of that didn't matter. Everybody had to stop and pause. So that's how God works, brains. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think the universe has a way of uh, making the unseen seen. And, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's like the folks drinking dirty water out in Michigan. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they, were, they were living under those conditions for years. Yes. For years. yes. Nobody noticed. They were hidden. They were forgotten. And so you have people in power who are in powerful positions. They have a responsibility. Nobody should be drinking water that's poison. Nobody should be bathing in water that's poison. Nobody should be afraid to walk around. As a child, I could remember uh, when you were told that, you know, if you have a problem, call a policeman, they'll help you. Right, right. Where did that go? Where, where did that go? What happened? Well, you know, like I say, in defense of them, mm -hmm. it's a tough job. Mm -hmm. It's a tough job. There maybe should be term limits, you know, yes. so yeah. that they can have a break. Because, training, yeah. Right. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of PTSD and it's a lot of oh. civilians, you yeah. and I, that are going to be um, going through this as we re enter into the workplace. For sure. As we, you know, just go out. I had a little social anxiety when I went to the post office. Mm -hmm. oh, you're standing too close and you don't have a yeah. mask. You know? That's right. That's and right. The mask thing, you know, you are inhaling carbon dioxide. I agree. I My agree. eyes was all dry. Yeah. So yeah. how long are we going to have to do that? It's, and you know what, it's, uh, it's interesting because I'd like to hear, I'm the type of person who's very analytical. I like to see both sides. So I, we hear a lot from the doctors and the experts that are pro lockdown, pro wearing the masks. But I also want to hear from the other people that disagree with that. I'd like to be able to hear both sides and then make up my own mind. But it's, you know, I get very uncomfortable if I hear any, anybody who's silenced. I think in any situation. Well, I like silence here because uh, Dr. Fauci, we haven't heard from him two, three weeks. That's right. Yeah. So we really don't know what's going on. And so other people are like, okay, well, we've had enough of that. I don't want to play anymore. Let's yeah. go out and, and let's deal with the real world until you start seeing people fall dead in the streets. Yeah. And that's not what we want. That's not what we want. But I understand what you're saying. I, like you, need a balanced perspective. I need to have complete information to make an informed decision. And that's about anything, your relationships, your friendships, 
everything. You need to be able to hear the pros and the cons. Whether you like what you hear or not is irrelevant. I agree. I agree. But what is relevant is that you have the information and then you can make a decision. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I'm so glad to have you here. And I'm glad to know that you love family. You want an authentic yeah. conversation. Don't be cruel. And let's paint the sky purple. Oh, I love that. I love that. Oh, that's, Tell that's my friends how to get in contact with you, uh, Stephanie. Oh. I want them to work with you, get to know you, purchase your book, and you. uh, be a part of your world. Thank you. Uh, they can reach me at stephaniemiljas.com. That's S T E F A N I E M I L J A S.com. Miljas. I always say Malchus. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I get a lot of pronunciations. <laughs> Well, uh, one pronunciation is you are the best. And I thank you so much for being a loyal fan to the show, for being a great friend. Um, you know, just thank to you. see you like and love my post just warms my heart. And I can't wait to give you a big old hug, okay? Well, thank you. Me too. Me too. Very All much right. so. I cannot wait to meet you. All right. Brains, go in, listen to other edgy conversations. We've got so many of them. Her son is coming up next, and it is going to be a real powerful conversation because he's a heavy hitter, and we both had interactions with Muhammad Ali, so there's going to be so much we're going to be able to talk about. Thank you again, Precious, for being here on the edge. Brains, do everything you can. Keep your dudes up, but fight the good fight, all right? Talk Thank to you, you later. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. appreciate it. Thank you so much.